Samoa, there are many people with disabilities living without some of the most basic equipment, things that we take for granted. Despite the recent earthquakes in Canterbury, a group of Rotarians from Ashburton saw this need existed and decided they could do something to help. Once you go beyond the beaches of Samoa, you discover the simple life of rural villages. It's almost subsistence living here. And people with disabilities often rely on charity for basic equipment, like wheelchairs. When things break down, there's no backups. Your tires are completely flat. Yeah. I can move. OK. Tanga Sufo's wheelchair broke a year ago. Since then, he's been stuck inside his house and spends his days perched on a hard tabletop. He can only move from his valet if someone carries him. I just sit on the house. I can't go anything because I can't walk. In Samoa, people with disabilities are in dire need of even the most basic equipment. Some Rotarians from Ashburton thought they could make a difference. Ashburton is a complete contrast to Samoa. It's a rich agricultural zone. People are very friendly in mid Canterbury and hard working. And generally speaking, when you ask someone to help, um, normally there's, you're never knocked back. Walter and Heather van der Klee built their dream home just outside of Ashburton. They've got all the modern conveniences. And if Walter's bike breaks down, he doesn't think twice about dropping it to the local mechanic. But he's got to thinking about his specific neighbours. Through attitude, Walter's heard about the need there and decided to help. I was looking at attitude on TV and I saw that some people had wheelchairs but it was mentioned that they had no disability ramps to get out of the farleys. Um, and so I actually rang the producer and asked for some contact numbers in Samoa. So this is a shelter box. Walters travelled the world with Rotary, delivering disaster relief. He was there in Samoa after the 2009 tsunami. Well, I feel a certain responsibility. I'm in a position where I can help. Um, I like involving other people. Generally speaking, I'm prepared to take a leadership role if required. Walter roped in fellow Rotarian Brian Fielder for his latest mission. Practical blokes, they decided to get their hands on some wheelchairs and ship them to Samoa. The idea of Samoa came about by one of the members of, of the Rotary Club in Ashburton being involved with the distribution of shelter boxes after the tsunami. It was a good opportunity to be part of it with, with some hands-on work. So we're going over there to deliver these wheelchairs and then make sure that we can build disability ramps and whatever they need to make the whole project integrated, really. About 50 wheelchairs were required, and so after numerous phone calls, um, we actually found Enable New Zealand had some surplus stock that they were prepared to give us, and then they put us on to, to um, somebody else who had the balance. Before she knew it, Heather had been roped in too. I'm expecting to get out where, where the tourists don't see, to get out of the out blocks and, and just find out what Samoa's really about. It's a trip designed to help others, but you can guarantee it'll have an impact on their lives too. The expectations aren't great. We're, we're going over there to learn and, and help. Walter's used to managing multi-million dollar construction projects and having all the resources he needs. He'll use all his business skills and contacts to pull this mission off. I've met a lot of people over there that I really respect and what they're trying to do. And to be able to be a small part of that's a great thing to help me make some sense of my skills, really. The scale of need here in Samoa is much greater than the Rotarians initially realised. Many of those lucky enough to have a wheelchair have had the same one for 20 years. The rough terrain means they take a battering, 
and many are well past their use-by date. The locals are eagerly awaiting the shipment, but the ship's late. Tangatifo Vaila was born with twisted hands and feet. In New Zealand, he probably would have had physiotherapy to help with his mobility and general function. He relies on a wheelchair, and his broke months ago. The ground around the fale is uneven, not easy going in a wheelchair. So Tangatifo, can you tell me about the, the wheelchair you have and why you need a new one? Because I need a new one because I, I want to go to the church or any meeting of church. I can't go because my, the wheelchair is not working, it's not broken now. How long has the wheelchair been broken though, so you can't use it? One year. One year? Yeah. Wow, it's a long time. It's a long time. Tangatifo lives with his extended family. Meals are prepared and eaten in a separate fale, the social hub of Samoan homes. His old wheelchair was rickety, but it did mean he could move around. For the past year, he's been stuck inside his whale. He can't attend church or even join the family for meals. Tangatifo is a respected poet. He writes completely upside down. He's always found ways of doing things, and it frustrates him that his life is so restricted without his wheelchair. And how does it make you feel when you're not able to do those things? Are you able to push the wheelchair yourself? No. no. no? So yeah. somebody uh, who, um, yeah. who pushes you around? Uh, my brothers or cousins, mm -hmm. any person come to push me. Uh -huh. okay. If I want to call something, mm -hmm. yeah. On the other side of the island, the Rotarians are equally frustrated. Hi, Louise. Oh, so what's, what's happening now? You're at Customs. The ship has finally docked, but now it seems Customs won't release the container. They're desperate to get it off the ship. They only plan to be here for a week. I've quickly discovered how hard it is to get around Samoa in a wheelchair. You can't get any traction, and it's like wheeling through sand. It's no wonder the locals' wheelchairs look so beaten up. <laughs> Hello. Fa'afatai has a wheelchair and can push himself, but his house is surrounded by a metre-high wall. He can't get in and out without someone lifting him. So it's pretty hard work coming through here, eh? Yeah. How do you manage? <laughs> you, you got people helping you? Yeah. People help yeah. me. Yeah. Would you like to be able to do it by yourself, though? Uh, it's yeah. hard for me. To push, it's hard yeah. for you to push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think the wheelchair would, would make it hard because your front wheels are so thin. Yeah. The wheels are really thin because if the terrain's gravel like yeah. that, it's better if they're wide like this. Yeah. It would make it easier for your cousin to push you. Yeah. <laughs> what about getting into your house? How do you how do you get up there? Uh, my guys mm -hmm. push me up. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. It, it would really be easier if you had a ramp, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, 
my goodness, you must be so strong. <laughs> For some, it may well be life changing. With the, that little bit more independence, if they get out, can get out and about a bit more, I, th I think uh, can make a huge difference to their lives. And especially if they've got uh, wheelchairs that are a bit more robust than what we've seen so far. In New Zealand, our wheelchairs oh. are designed to fit the individual's needs. <sighs> Fafa Tai is getting a new chair Ooh. from the Rotarians. It might not be custom made, but it'll be a huge improvement on this one. No wonder it's so hard. You've got no air in your tyres. Yeah. <laughs> that must make it really hard to push. Yeah. I think they I don't know what kind of wheelchairs the Rotarians are bringing over from New Zealand, but they're going to have to be, they're going to have to be pretty hardy and made of some pretty tough stuff for terrain like this. Should we do the last bit? We'll go this way. What? It's going to be easier up here. Oh. <laughs> All of the agencies working here in Samoa are doing amazing work, but their resources are limited. We're heading to meet a young woman who was paralysed after falling from a mango tree when she was 16. Antonina Forsi is 22 now and a mother. Her needs have changed. In order to look after her daughter and have an ordinary life, she needs a decent wheelchair. Sometimes it's too hard for me to do my job or to do my daughter get her shower or to throw her something to sweep the house, yeah, to dirty my bed or whatever I want. Yeah, it's sometimes too hard or sometimes, yeah, it's good, good to be a mom with me, to be in a wheelchair. Before her baby was born, Antonina had a job, but her wheelchair doesn't fold up, so she can't get it into a car and return to work. It's so hard for me to do everything I want. I was missing all things of my life to enjoy my friends. If you wanted to go into town yeah. to meet your friends, what would you do? Then it's too, too hard for me to take over my wheelchair at the town or whatever. So it would make it hard, wouldn't it, to get yeah, into a car hard. if you yeah. can't fold it up? I want to go everywhere. It's too hard for me to take my wheelchair. <laughs> if I get a new wheelchair or if I get a better wheelchair to do it myself, to call it whatever I want. for the shipment and all the wheelchairs to arrive. The Rotarians have been keeping busy building, building ramps for people so they can get in and out of their houses, something people don't often think about. You give people wheelchairs, but then they've got to be able to get into their home. So they're doing a great job. Well, you always try and mentally sort of create a picture. You said to us, oh, I would need about a metre high. So then you sort of have a, a quick workout mentally what you think you'll need. And you know that 150 by 50 timber can hold sort of plenty of weight. So that makes your sides. And then it's a matter of bracing it in such a way that it doesn't fall over, of course. Ow. Ow. Nice. We split up into several teams to do different jobs. It was a bit of overkill here, there's a few too many people, but the good news is the container's supposed to be open in the next hour, so... Really? Yeah. Oh, that is good news. So we'll be delivering wheelchairs this afternoon. Customs has finally released the container. There's walking aids in over 70 wheelchairs, and they've thrown in some new desks and chairs for the local schools. Assembly and delivery can begin. It's great. Moving parts. I found myself acting as a bit of a consultant. 
Rotarians have asked me to have a look at the wheelchairs and think about which one or two might be best for the people we've seen that really need them. And all of these are in much better condition than the wheelchairs we've seen people using. But I'm thinking about one for Antonina, the young woman with a spinal cord injury. And one thing she definitely needs is a cushion. She's basically sitting on a bit of card. Here's a good one right here. This one's even got a bag on it. <laughs> and padded footrest. That would be good for um, Fafa Tai. <laughs> and it would be the very first one that you put on. <laughs> but the one for the girl with the spinal cord injury, I think I've found the one that would be good for her. Which one? This one. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Is this the first one you put on? I'd spotted the perfect chair for Antonina. I'm not sure the Rotarians appreciated me picking one from the bottom of the carefully stacked pile. But I want to sit in it to see if it's the right size. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Half the use, new wheels, no low mileage, Jeff import. <laughs> oh, that's comfortable. All right, let's take this for a spin. Yeah, it's good. It's not as comfortable as mine. <laughs> not as comfortable. Some of the wheelchairs were given to Loto Tamafai, an organisation that runs a school and outreach programme for children with disabilities. Judy Winter is a Kiwi who lives in Samoa. She's a physiotherapist. Okay, this is one of the chairs, Heather, that came with you from New Zealand. Okay, so what are you going to do with it? When we got it here, the front tyres were torn, so we've we took these off and we robbed the tyres off this chair to put onto this chair. You could do with some more spares or the um, whole wheelchair? Um, yeah, no, the whole wheelchair's great, um, especially children's sizes, because we've had 19 new referrals since March. In the few days since she's been here, Heather's come to appreciate the real need here in Samoa and the challenges the kids and their parents face. So this chair, I'm not sure if Sumiti will be this size or this size here, um, but he lives on a farm, so these these tyres on this chair would be great for him. What we may do, if he fits that chair, the seat width in that chair, then what we may do is just flip off these wheels. So see, it's great, they just have push buttons, and so everything's interchangeable. So we can just, um, again, rob Peter for Paul. The mix and match wheelchairs are off to their new owners. What are you expecting today? I'm looking forward to seeing the children when they receive their wheelchair. Yeah. I really am because we delivered some we, we built a ramp a few days ago and some of these children, it just touches your heart because they're just the smiles on their faces, they're just, they're just fantastic children. The locals have joined in as part of the delivery gang. Many of the wheelchairs are destined for people in remote villages. Sameti Taibu is eight years old and lives with his family on a banana plantation. Sameti has cerebral palsy. He can't walk and he's never had a wheelchair that he can push himself. Can you tell me about the wheelchair here? I don't know. 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 Oh, oh, my God. 
a New Zealand we get chairs to trial and the parents um, get to choose from about three wheelchairs. Usually the agency who's selling the wheelchair comes and they um, measure up the child and they script it and then they order a wheelchair specifically for that child. And maybe this chair is a little bit narrow for mm -hmm. Samiti, but um, it's going to make it easier for him to learn to self-propel if he's in a smaller base. We've been very, very short of stock, and so that's why we haven't been able to give him a wheelchair, because we've had nothing to give him. And now you can go racing. Look, Push. Get him to push to you. Your arms back here. Sumiti is painfully shy, but he's been quietly checking me out, watching to see how I push myself. That's so cool. Watch me. Watch me. Well, nothing like learning from your mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. Try that again. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> I love it. It's the first time with this wheelchair, and within minutes, he's got it sussed. Hi. See ya. <laughs> and how do you think it will change Samiti's life now you see that he can push himself? <laughs> You can't underestimate the impact. This little boy can now go to school. <laughs> Our young mum, Antonina's next. Having handpicked her chair, I can't wait to help deliver it. Word spread that it's on its way. And the best part, this chair does fold up. She can get to church and have some time out with her friends. Hi. <laughs> thank you, Papa Tai. How are you? Hi, thank you. Oh, nice to see you again. Yeah, nice to How see are you. Guys? Yeah. This is Walter yeah. and Heather. Hi, how are you? And this is a new wheelchair they've bought you. Here we go. Yeah. And I would like to say a few words of thanks from the bottom of my heart. The seats will help me more in my way of traveling to and um, from and especially to the church over there. And I'm sorry for not enough for not having something in to return. God bless you all so far. Walter and Heather hadn't met Antonina before, but I'm guessing they'll never forget her. Because I'd met Tangatifo earlier, the Rotarians let me choose um, one of the wheelchairs that came out of the container. The thing that really got me about Tangatifo was, you know, he was saying he could hear his family having fun in the kitchen fale across the way, but couldn't get down there and join them. So I think this wheelchair is going to make a real big difference to his life. And what you need to understand is without a wheelchair, Tangatifo never leaves his village. He can't get to church, and that's a big part of Samoan life. It's been one of those humbling trips. We are all reminded how seemingly small things can make a massive difference. Tanopa. Hello. <laughs> how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Good. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Good. I want, to, want you to meet, this is um, Colin and Roger, and they have a wheelchair, which we think might be good for you. 
I think this one will be better. It's, it's got a really good um, cushion on it with air in it, so I think it will be good for you. Good. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay? Yeah. You're comfortable? Yeah. yeah? <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Go on, go from what? Hey. Now they are going to go from what? 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 They are going to this is going to change your life and uh, make your life better. So um, that they don't need any gift back. I'm, I'm sure they will agree that um, they're just happy to see you have a better quality of life. Well, thank these guys. They did all the hard work. <laughs> all the best. Very good. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you for being It's our pleasure. And to see the smile on your face, that's enough. Thank you. <laughs> it's barely 20 metres from Tangatufo's Fale to the kitchen, yet the family greets him like he's been away this past year. And I thought it was quite incredible. The reaction from his family when they, you know, finally got him off his hard bed that he's been sitting on for the last six months when he hasn't had a working wheelchair. And they were so delighted to have him back sort of in the, in the family fold. And obviously now he can go to church as well, and church is such a big part of life here. Yes. And to the Rotarians, job well done. <laughs> The Rotarians didn't sit around, and I like their hands-on approach. Yeah, they definitely went about it the right way, getting the help to where it was most needed. Love, life, relationships, work, and the odd drama. We bring you the truth about disability. Our favourite moments. I was like, Mum, that lady has no hands. And I was like, whoa, lady, and waved and kept walking. <laughs> It's the first time I've ever been called a lady, it's very odd. 21 New Zealanders have now been chosen as finalists for the 2011 Attitude Awards. To secure your ticket to the televised black tie event, visit our website, attitudepictures.com. Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.